Um, again, I'm Daniel Hens, meteorologist here. I know we haven't all seen each other in about a year, so you may have forgotten, but every year we try and do a monsoon outlook before the uh, start of the season to try and give a heads up if we can actually give you a heads up um, on what to expect in terms of temperatures and uh, rainfall. So, uh, truer words have never, never been said by Forrest Gump, so I truly thank him about life and actually the monsoon in general, basically that, uh, you know, the monsoon is like a box of chocolates and you never know what you're gonna get. And uh, a quick way to kind of just show that here is we can look at our last 40 years worth of rainfall. Um, that's what you're seeing on this image. During the monsoon, this is averaged across our alert network. Um, the mean over that 40 year period is 2.88 inches. And as you can tell, we have quite a roller coaster. You know, we have very good wet years, including our most recent uh, monster year back in 2014 there. Um, but we also have this horrible, horrible 2020 where we just set our, our driest uh, summer that we've had at least on record here with our data as well as when you start looking at some of the longer term data uh, across the entire state. Um, a couple of quick points I want to make about this because um, people always ask me questions. Well, we had a really bad 2020. Does that mean, is that going to be indicative of what we see this year? And there actually is no correlation between last year's monsoon versus this upcoming monsoon, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yes, we do tend to see multiple years of dry seasons or multiple years of wet seasons. Again, though, it's, it's pretty random. Um, it can come down to some pretty uh, complex factors. So with that, let's do our quick basic review for those of you that are not overly familiar about the monsoon or you may be new to the valley. Um, the season officially runs from June 15th to September 30th. Um, so we're actually already in the, the, the monsoon, but for the people that live here, they know onset where we actually get the moisture that streams up from the south as well as the rainfall tends to wait until the start of July. Um, our average season rainfall from the monsoon tends to make 30 to 40% of our total year. And at Phoenix Sky Harbor, where we're officially measuring with the National Weather Service, that actually equates to 2.43 inches. That's actually 10% less now than what it was previously. Um, we just updated our new climate normals as we moved into through 2020. So there was actually a 10% drop. So we've actually dried over the last um, 30 years here. So as far as us, again, here, when we average across all of our alert network, it's 2.88. That number's a bit higher because we have some higher terrain gauges and things. So these are our, our historical four kind of patterns we look for that can promote uh, heavy rainfall. We have our four corners high, which we kind of just showed on that previous example. A great basin high, which is known for the big rim to valley type thunderstorms, which we've seen in previous years, unfortunately not last year. We have a West Texas, New Mexico high, where that ridge kind of shifts over into the Texas region and we can get big intrusions of tropical moisture. And we've actually seen some of our bigger rain events over the last few decades with that kind of pattern. And then we have this less common trapping high where we have inverted troughs and things that are able to move up into the desert southwest. So the official outlook from the National Weather Service, um, the folks at the Climate Prediction Center, overwhelmingly favors a hotter than normal summer. This is nothing new for the last probably three decades. This has kind of been what we see almost every year. Uh, and in terms of odds, again, the odds in our, our three-tier system here um, truly do favor above normal temperatures. So as far as rainfall, um, it's almost equal chances. So there is no real t uh, favor for above, below, or, or right around near normal. And this is interesting only because a lot of our longer range models up until just May were saying it's going to be a wet season. We had this really strong signal and then things all of a sudden changed uh, mid-May and early June and things kind of dried out. So CPC kind of followed along with that. And I'm going to try and see if I can just touch a little on to why they may have made that change. Um, so I always like to talk really quickly about what's going on with ENSO, so the El Nino Southern Os Oscillation. We're currently, from this past winter and then coming into the summer now, we're coming out of La Nina and we're moving into a neutral phase. And that just basically means the warms of the water along the uh, equatorial Pacific, which I'm showing in that top right figure, are going from cooler than average to near normal. Um, as we move ahead into this summer and this fall, we're actually anticipating, you know, this uh, being from going from this neutral phase back into potentially a La Nina um, again into this winter, which again will have some more impl implications, which I'll mention here in a little bit. You are now looking at the Western Hemisphere and you're looking at uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. 
Um, I'm going to highlight the uh, Equatorial Pacific again. You can see this is the last month worth of data. The yellows, oranges, and reds mean warmer than normal, and the, the blues mean cooler than normal, and the whites is kind of right around normal. And we can see the, the Equatorial Pacific there kind of warming back into a neutral phase. But more importantly, up in the Gulf of California, you can see the bulk of it over the last month, we've been running much warmer than normal. And the reason, again, I want to bring that up, I talk about this every year, is we have a, a simple way to get a heads up as to when the, the monsoon actually tends to begin, the onset portion part of it. Not when the season starts, but when we actually see activity. The key based on research here is we're looking for a minimum temperature of 26 degrees averaged across the Gulf of California just for us to even get a start. As you can see right now, we're already there with the Northern Gulf at 27, the Central Gulf at 28 and a half, or excuse me, 28 and the Southern at 28 and a half. Our next key metric that we're looking for is up in the Northern Gulf part there. We want to get to at least 27 and a half degrees Celsius. We're basically there. It's the, what, the 22nd of June right now. We've met all the minimum requirements and so we would expect at any point now the onset can occur. That's a good sign. So the next thing we tend to want to talk about here is what about the, the hurricane outlook? And so last year it was definitely slower and quieter than normal. We had 17 named storms, only four of which became hurricanes. Three of those were major hurricanes, but none of them had any impact to Mexico, the desert southwest, or really anything. Uh, the previous years were actually very, very, very active. Um, and moving ahead this year, again, being in this neutral slash La Nina pattern, that tends to favor the Atlantic and not so much the Pacific. So the folks over at the Hurricane Center are predicting a below normal to maybe at best near normal outcome similar to what we saw last year. And as we all know, we don't get a whole lot of hurricanes here in Arizona. However, we get moisture that shed from these systems. For example, in 2014, when we had our big rain events, those were all based from moisture uh, moving up from the south because we had our West Texas high. And again, the less opportunities for those kind of events, maybe the less opportunities we could see a, a, a really maybe wet, wet season. Um, so another thing I'd like to point out here is our antecedent rainfall. So you're seeing where we are in terms of uh, percent of normal, uh, percentile, excuse me, from December of last year through April. So basically the winter and the spring, it's atrocious across the Western US. You all know, you've watched on the news how many fires are burning in Arizona. They're already happening actually up now. I was reading in, in Montana and parts of the Dakotas earlier by a few months. It was a really bad year, um, or I should say a bad winter and spring in terms of rainfall. When it comes to monsoon, for giving any kind of clue, years, the, the, the research has shown years when we have dry winters, dry springs, it does help advance the monsoon ridge farther north. And the farther north it goes, it can put us into one of those favorable patterns. So that's a good thing. Um, but it's not a guarantee. So I think we'd all prefer to see a wet winter going into the summer versus what we have going on right now. So all of that being said, um, we had an atrocious 2020 monsoon and we had a very dry winter and spring. Um, we have a really active fire season. It's another bad one like we had last year. Um, everything we're seeing is pointing to above normal temperatures for this summer, it's gonna be hot. Uh, the data that we're seeing does suggest an early onset to rainfall, which is good. The earlier we can get the whole monsoon going, the better chance we have of getting more rain. But there's nothing that we're seeing that's pointing towards a wetter than normal se season. If anything, we're expecting below average rainfall again, and maybe if we're lucky to near normal rainfall. Again, this is average across all of our rain gauges within Maricopa County, the South Central Arizona region here. Um, again, we're not likely to have a repeat of last summer. That was the driest we've had on record and statistically speaking it would be very very difficult to have a repeat. In fact if we even had below normal rainfall it might still feel like it was a really active season just because of how slow last year was. Um, I do want to point out this is always great it only takes one or two heavy rain events at your house or your particular part of the valley to reach the historical monsoon quota bust my forecast and you'll probably be happy and I'll be happy because that means it was wetter in your area you're happy I'm happy everybody wins. Um, but it is very complex and again trying to guess how much rain is going to fall based off of three months into the future with all sorts of different features is, is very difficult. But there's always some hope here. Um, and we always like to emphasize any location in the valley surrounding areas can flood. It doesn't matter whether you're in a flood zone or not. We've 
seen time and time again that each monsoon, some different part of the uh, Maricopa County will get heavy rainfall and they'll get flooding and people will say, I didn't expect it. I didn't, I'm not in a flood zone. I've never seen it this bad. It happens every year. So we want you to be aware. We have so much information on our website at maricopa.gov slash monsoon. Now's the time to take a look at that.